Good morning, all, or happy lunchtime to my friends in South Downs and the rest of you living in the future. And welcome to Cowbird's Corner for this week's Coffee with Cow. And before I finish my introduction, let me just say, today, this morning, has been full of technical issues. You'll notice I'm by myself. Baron Logan is still having issues logging in. His computer's being a dick. My computer's also being a dick and won't have my green screen resolved. So we're just winging this. And there's Logan. Cool. Let me pop him in real quick, and then we'll start this mess over. Morning, Logan. Good morning, everybody. Sorry to be late. Um, no, I, dude, I, no, okay. All right, <laughs> we started the show right, damn it. Here we go. All right. <laughs> good morning, all, and welcome to Cowbird's Corner for this week's Coffee with Cow. I'm Lord Cowbird Geiler, Panty the Meridian Cross, Panty the Argent Comet, Panty the Argent Lamp, Panty the Falcon's Faith, and Reaper. Coming to you live from the Baron of the Osprey on the southern coast of Meridies. Today, I am joined by the magnanimous, the amazing, the awesome, the host of Ask Nights Live, Baron Logan Path Warden. Good morning, Your Excellency. Good morning, Cal. How are you today? <laughs> I'm better now, I think. <laughs> oh, man. You know, it's funny that the, the show on web shows is going to be the one that's going to just break me, me today. Uh, of course, of course. But, mm. but honestly, that was like the perfect thing that could happen because that's a point that we want to talk about. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, so first of all, today's show is coffee theme. We do have to talk about our coffee. Uh, so, my coffee today and my brand new Maggie mug from Feed the Ravens. Thanks to my Westie besties, uh, Logan included. This thing is awesome. You guys are awesome. Love you guys. Pretty badass, huh? Dude, I, 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 I'm just saying my house got dusty when I opened it. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, see, out of that, I am drinking Lavazza's Kilimanjaro Single Origin. I don't know why that sounds fancy, but it does. So, pretty tasty. So, what are you drinking, Logan? Um, so, I am not a huge coffee guy. You know, I do it from time to time just when I'm feeling it. Uh, so, today, I am drinking a chicory chai, which is, you know, Super spice, dark tea, uh, but chicory in it, which is you know coffee substitute. So that's that's coffee esque. I'll take it. <laughs> oh man! All right, Let me pop back over here. Good morning. I see her highness has joined us. Good morning, your highness. Good morning, Runa. All right. So yeah, today. So today's show. We're talking about web shows. Uh, and this is like I said, it, it's just appropriate that today's we, we have technical issues. Logan's computer was was working up. My green screen just decided to not work today. I'm just turning it off because I'm sick of looking at it. Um, but so web shows have become a thing. So we've been in quarantine since March. So, so we're going on just a, a two months shy of a year now. And since that time, we've you know the SCA has gone has gone virtual. We've got virtual yeah. courts being done via Zoom. We've got meetings being done via Zoom. And we have all this content being produced by by across the known world that's been uploaded to YouTube or Facebook. You know, and this is not something new. Like YouTube's been around for a hundred years. It's not like not, not a new thing to the world, but it's a new thing to the SCA. Um, we, you know, I've seen stuff on YouTube before. We've done. You've seen, you know, a little video here and there. You know, where it's been sort of it existed, but really, nobody really used it. Uh, within the last year, that has. I would say double, tripled, quadrupled the amount of content we have out there just because we're all bored. <laughs> right? That's pretty it was, funny. It was it really it was like we're all sitting around going, well, I got nothing else to do. What am I going to do? So, uh, so actually, Logan, let, so let's start your show first, and then we'll kind of get into mine. What started Ask Nights Live? Where did you start with that? What was your sort of t tell me your your background on that? Um, well, okay, so it, it actually started with a conversation. Um, with uh, Her Grace Helga after watching one of their Between Two Peers shows. Uh, it was, oh, I think it was like, uh, they hadn't done like more than like four or five at the time. Right. But I was loving them. You know what I mean? Like, like I was like, oh, this is really awesome. Um, <clears throat> and being an unbelt, you know, they were, they were talking to people and getting all this great information. And we were actually getting to know like people that I've I've known for years in passing, but getting to actually know them as people even more so. You know what I mean? Like, and, and especially a lot of them were peers, and you know, there's that whole peer fear thing where people don't like approaching them and all that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, I I thought it was great, and being an unbuilt, um, 
I talked to Helga because I was like, hey, your show is great. I'd love to do a show like that. Or you guys should do a show like that um, with nights so that, you know, because she had a, a very uh, fortuitous upbringing. You know, she pretty much raised in the SEA. So she knew all these people and, you know, she's got no filter. <laughs> I can't say that. That's not true. Don't come get me your grace. <laughs> You know, but but she's she's very outgoing. Uh, she likes to say weaponized extrovert. You know, right. Um, so if she had a question, she would just go and talk to these people. You know, um, well, we have a lot of people who can't do that. Right. You know what I mean, they can't just walk up to someone. So I was like, it would be great if you guys did a, or if there was a show where you know people could get to know knights, so they could get over that peer fear and they could ask their questions without feeling embarrassed or anything like that, and. <clears throat> We were actually, uh, it was on a conference call, and she was like, yeah, that's a great idea. You should do it. <laughs> that's her favorite phrase. You should do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you guys who know Helga, you know, you know that that face and that voice of that she mm -hmm. used. It's like, you should do it. And then I was like, okay, I, I guess I should do it. So just chit-chatting with her for a little bit and – um and then with uh, Mistress Tulia about how they, you know, put their show together and, um, you know, what format they use and everything and got a lot of help from them. And then it was just finding some willing knights. And you know what? There's lots of them. It turns out they like to talk about themselves a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, and they also love to help and to teach. And they all understand because they were there before, you right. know that that looking up and they want to to help people they want to get as many people excited as they are right. um because when it comes down to it they're all big nerds just like the rest of us right. they're, just, they're just fighty nerds you know <laughs> yeah well yeah i mean this is they're they're nerd is specific they, they like dressing up in funny clothes and hitting people with sticks that that's their nerd they're you know they're, they're nerds not you know minis gaming or or painting, they're nerds hitting people with sticks. That's an art in itself. So cool. Uh, so yeah. So so you're on episode what 33 now? I think is the next one coming up. 34, something like 34. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is, uh, and I'm so, so. How does that feel for you? Like 34 episodes in, you you. So now you've interviewed 34 times two, at least you know 70 some odd nights, probably more. How does that feel? Like looking back at, at Logan in March, what is that like? What does that feel like to you? Uh, to be honest, I don't have time to look back because I'm still looking forward. Man, <laughs> you know, putting, that's one of the things that, that people don't realize when they, they start a show is it's work. Mm -hmm. it, it's a lot of work. Um, you can see, again, with between two peers, you know, they they just hit their 40th show. Um, and they've come to realize that doing this every week is tough. Um, and maybe they should take some breaks. Um and and I agree. So it, it's harder though when you're doing the show by yourself. And then right. like you, you know, you're doing like three, four shows pretty much by yourself. Right. Um, you know, but it helps when you have great technical help. I'm I'm looking at you. <laughs> so, yeah. So that, that's a big deal. So so and there and there's so we, we have a couple different web shows we do, right? So we have so you, you're running Ask Nights Live largely by yourself and have been you know, like recently I've come on to help you. Like we're, so we're doing a thing now. Um, but yeah, so, so you're, you're playing host and tech crew. That's a lot. It's a lot to do. It's like, because then it's one of the things that if you don't show up, there's no show, right? Yeah. It's like with between two peers, if, if Helga has to drop, Tulia can still pick it up and do it herself or, you know, mm -hmm. Carrie can jump or smells can jump on. There's a hundred of the peers I can find to grab to, to host that. Right. If their tech crew doesn't go to show up, one of the two of them doesn't show up, they can find somebody to fill in. Right. But if you or I don't show up, it's there's no show, and that's so yeah, you're right. That's stressful. That's why I went to so, so my show is personally. I run What You Playing Wednesdays every other Wednesday now. I run Coffee with Cal every other Wednesday, and then I run the uh, What Makes a Night every other. I'm sorry, every other Sunday, and then I run What Makes a Night every other Sunday. Um, that's why I went to every other week because I realized. Mm -hmm. So I was doing, so when I started watching playing Wednesdays is because I, I love gaming. I, I wanted to do stuff about gaming. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm bored. I'm sitting in the house. I'm unemployed. I've got nothing going on. You know, what am I doing in my life? And, and largely I was like, okay, also this is sort of my, 
my laurel thing, right? It's my it's my art that I'm working to. Yeah. It's my path stuff, right? This is a good way to document. It's a good way to teach classes to get them out there because it's it's hard to teach game classes in Zoom because you need yeah. that you need the screen shares are harder, the tactile stuff is harder, right? But if I can play if I can play the game with somebody, that's an easier way to teach it. Even if it's just one person, other people can watch us play it, right? It worked out. Yeah. I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna do it this way. But doing that every week, I got burnt out quick. I was dude, I was tired after like I, two months. I was done. I was like, I'm sick. <laughs> so also, too, here's the thing. And, and tell me if you, if you found this out. So you had a fairly decent audience early on, didn't you? Like, what was your viewership early on? Do you remember? Um, yeah, it's, it's it always hovers uh, around 40 to 50 um, between platforms. It's gone up a little bit, actually, now that we've... Uh, now that we're live streaming on both Facebook and YouTube, uh, it makes it easier. But the the biggest thing that I find is the rewatches. You right. know, you may not have a giant audience uh, at the time <clears throat> at the time of the show because not everybody can get on to see the live show. Right. Um, but the rewatches, I was amazed. I've got one of the my videos has over a thousand views. Like, oh, wow. like that. That's that's a lot to me. <laughs> you know? yeah, that's, that's, that's a lot to anybody honestly just from a from like a youtube metrics that's a lot and yeah. it's not like you know markiplier fancy youtube people a lot but it's a lot for us right it's a lot for yeah, yeah. well since we have such a small focused niche audience you right. know what I mean? it's not like we've got a lot of other folks um just out of the blue watching our shows yeah, yeah we, we're not getting the natural reach yet so yeah so so my initial viewer counts were like four and mm -hmm. one of those was in the house. Like one of those was the girls watching the other room, right? Yeah. So that was, honestly, that was part of my burnout too, is I wasn't getting the initial viewership that I wanted. Now, granted, I was doing SCA stuff, which is a niche audience. I was doing gaming, which is a niche audience within a niche audience, right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I realized that also, I'm not as popular as you are. I'm also not as popular as the nights you have on. I, I'm, I'm, I am now, right? I'm becoming more popular now. Like right? I'm, not, I'm not like downing myself. I'm just, I'm not, right? No, no. I, different kingdoms. You're, you're, you know, a much bigger person, and you have a much bigger network, right? Same thing between two peers. Between two peers went from like 30, 40, 100. You know, they're having hundred <laughs> viewers. Uh, I'm like, I'm looking at this going. I've got four. Like, what the <laughs> hell, right? like I was, dude. I got depressed when I don't even lie. And the girls were like, they're like, they're like, cow. It's Tuli and Helga. That's why they yeah. have. Right? <laughs> you're right. All right. Cool. Um, well, and I got a bump from them too when I started because you know they, they were helping me do the show, so they are advertising. And now that we've we've all, you know, been helping each other and advertising each other, I've noticed another small increase. So right, well, yeah, the synergy of that has helped a lot. You're right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that was part of my burnout too, is not having that, not not getting the reaction I expected. Right, caused mm -hmm. me too. I was like, okay, what can I do? What's, what's my next step, right? I have all the stuff I want to do. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do, you know, I, I talked to Helga. Helga and I was like, oh, let's do this. Let's do this, you know, book review here. Cool. Let's, let's unpack your shit. I like that. And that that bumped my viewers kind of, right? And then I was like, okay, then we'll do this. And so I started adding shows and sort of bearing the content. And that seemed to have helped me because like, since I don't have that initial from me, yeah, bringing other people help. So I got a little bump from Helga and then, Good God! When I brought Duke Sean on, <laughs> for, for what makes a night? My, I, my that was my first fifty count show, fifty viewer count show. You yeah, know, just because because it, again, Sean brings brought his audience, right? Exactly. I had a couple that came from me, and because it was on a show on my channel, but then Sean brought another thirty people by himself. So I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and and then sometimes, like I've I've seen it with my show too. You know, you bring on a couple of nights that are very popular or have a large following themselves, um, you know, your, your viewership for that video goes up. Right. Um, you know, say maybe by, by 10 to 20. Right. Some, and some of those stick, you know, right. some of them come back for other shows, which is, you know, what we want. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we, they were watching for that. Cause it's, it's that night squire or their ladies or whatever they're watching right. for that show. Cause, Oh, it's a my night. I'm going to watch my, they're not my night show. Yeah. And yeah, and that's and hey, if we get that, that's great. That that helps. So, mm -hmm. uh, so we had a comment. I'm gonna I'm gonna address. So, uh, Ramut says, "I want to do a web show, but the fear of burnout is real." Yeah. So that that's literally I think that's what we're talking about here is the I, 
for for me, I, I've I've learned to manage it because I realized that I if I could help other people do the shows, I don't burn out as fast. So as yep. I, I know you haven't done this, but you've only been doing your show, but like so I noticed shows <laughs> for other people is actually easier. So like the stuff I do for you, the stuff I do for uh for their majesties of the Outlands, for Outland Royal Tea, that's easy for me. Go ahead, Logan. Do, yeah, do it if you can. Sorry. Uh, no, you're good, man. Um, so those shows are easy for me, right? I, I show up, I run the tech for that for that one hour, that two hour show, and then I then I go home, right? There's no extra work, right? Um, whereas for like for what you play Wednesdays, I've got to set the stream up, I've got to plan the stream, I've got to find the guests, I've got to make the video ahead of time, I've got to do all the extra work to prep it, and then show up and run the tech for the show and do the show. Uh, so the burnout for those is a lot more, uh, a lot easier to to achieve, which is why I go to like every other week. Um, but having somebody to do tech for you, having somebody to help you with those things, to sort of the, the initial, uh, that initial couple week period to get you over that hump, I think. Uh, for anybody, who, and this is for anybody out there who wants to start a show or, or is interested in starting a show, um, coming, coming to somebody like like me or somebody like you know Helga Antulia or um, uh, or like Duke Sean who do these shows regularly. To sort of help you get over that burden um, really helps that burnout a lot. Uh, yeah, admittedly, then you got to deal with all the Wessies. Uh, as her, as her, as her <laughs> but, you know, there are a lot of good Wessies out there that are a lot of really helpful people. So um, yeah, they're all right. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty decent guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying they're pretty good folks. Yeah, yeah. But um, you know what you're saying about the burnout is true. Like. And and here's here's a really weird thing, um, and I think it's because we're miss so we're not getting the in person interaction of events and stuff like that. Um, and then you do a show, and you have you know a wonderful guest on, and then sometimes uh, you know you'll go and you'll you'll do the after show where you get to see all these people and talk to people and meet new people. And you're like, you're feeling really great. And you get this super, super, you, you get that SCA high. And then, you know, the next day it's gone again. Yep. You know, like I, it's the weirdest thing. Um, getting that, that little bit of depression after, after a really good show, you know what I mean? <laughs> because you're, it, it kind of enhances or, or I don't know it, it makes makes our little situation here a little bit worse and then it then you're just like yeah but then I get to see all these people again and then it makes it better and then you start to get excited for your next show right so like yeah it's 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 a little bit of a roller coaster but it's worth it in the yeah. end you know yeah uh, and, and I've enjoyed it yeah but you're right so yeah there's always been that like before the show I'm like I don't want to do this tonight I don't want to. Put, I don't want to give up. But turn on. Like I don't care. I just want to go. I just want to go watch TV. And not care. And then after I'm like, oh my god, this is the best thing ever. We're doing another one tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's that high. Um, but it's the same thing as going to an event. It's that Monday morning drop, right? That 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 after the event drop. It's the same idea. We're just getting it sort of a it's just dope. I guess. Um, yeah. And, and and there's been a difference. Like I used to like my coffee show, especially the ones I've done by myself. I'm like I leave them. It's a good day. I'm happy. Oh, it's a good show. No, 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 whatever. I sort of ruined my day. But like, then we do like our three hour, like the dice show, right? It's just a ton of fun and a lot of interaction, just fun and like I'm laughing, right? That's a much bigger, like, dopamine drop. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot different, too. But again, it's, it's like the interaction. Yeah. It's like the post event blues, same same vibe, but amplified yeah. every week. We're getting it every week, and you're still at home in your pajamas. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's funny too. Like you're talking about, like right before a show or leading up to the show, or the day of, and you're just like, oh, "Man, I don't know if I want to do this. Like, I can't cancel now." It's it's kind of like having to pack the car before, yeah. where you're just like, "Oh, do I even want to go?" And then you get there, and you're like, "How could I think of not going? This is I'm right. an idiot." <laughs> yep, that's true. So, all right, so let's let's look at uh, so. So you mentioned uh, so it's we're talking about burnout, right? So we're talking about burnout on our side. Let's talk about burnout from the other side, from the from the viewership side. So something I've noticed, and something one of the reasons I have uh, personally been trying to promote things like YouTube as a venue 
is everybody in in, in Meridia specifically and sort of in the SCA whole are focusing on Zoom. Everybody's using Zoom for a lot of their stuff, right? Which is great. And Zoom has a purpose. I'm not going to talk bad about Zoom because mm-hmm. it's good for meetings. Yeah, You're having a meeting, multiple people hanging out, talking, and it's just a casual thing to work. But trying to produce any kind of directed content is difficult in Zoom. Right. So that's that's problem one, I think, because it's it's not built for that. It's built for a quick presentation at, during a meeting. Right. Hey, mm-hmm. here's the project I need to go through. Here's a here, look at my screen to do the thing. Right. That's what they're for. But like long term classes or here, I need to do the hour long class with like where I've got to do three different camera views or I've got to do some sort of like like court. And I, I, I've i preached this and I'm it's a pet peeve of mine that we're still using Zoom for courts when there's better options. Because um, I, I did a court for, for one of our barons and, and it looked better, like you could do it better. Right. Yeah. And there's some well, for the Let's look at my show. The last two episodes of my show, just with a little bit of help from you and swapping over to StreamYards here, like it's it's so much more fun. I can throw stuff in. Yeah. Right. It, it gives you it gives you more control. Really, is what it is. So so yeah. I, I so I've, t- I've talked talked to you about that. So but like using so using Zoom, you have that lack of control. You don't have that because it's not built for that, right? Mm-hmm. And it's not as pretty. You know, so I know uh, I, was, I was talking to His Majesty Bailey yesterday, and they're not doing the Allens isn't doing virtual courts. I know uh, the West isn't either, uh, but Meridia's has been, and, and the courts look good. They're not. It's 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 a Zoom meeting, right? So it's, it's what you expect of a Zoom meeting court. Mm-hmm. And whereas I'm happy we're doing courts. Like I'm, I want to be doing courts, right? I'm not happy with the way they look because. I could see like somebody getting their AOA in this level with, without the extra sort of pretty that like something like StreamYard can provide. I'm mean, like, I'm not, again, I'm not pitching StreamYard here. I'm just saying there's other options. Oh, um, you can pitch StreamYard. It's, it's fantastic. It can be a good platform, admittedly. Um, <laughs> but like it, it's, there is a negative, right? And that's one thing that I was talking to Bela about is, is he's like, yeah, I don't want to do virtual courts because I don't want somebody to get their AOA. Here's your AOA through a camera. Like he, he, he didn't want that. Right. And yeah. I think there's two ways you can do that and do it well. Um, but also, I think from the viewer side, you have – it is much less uh, anxiety and stressful for me to open a YouTube video than just for me to open up a Zoom. Mm-hmm. Right? So I think that's a thing. If you can – you know, so so having people – having things done in Zoom, even if – now, if you also Zoom and then also live stream it, like if you, you open up a Zoom for whoever wants to come in and also live stream it, like I know uh, the Midrealm does, their classes that way. Cool. That's mm-hmm. helpful. Because then you have a choice. Yeah. Uh, but if you're doing a Zoom, even if even if you're recording it, right? Even if you're recording it, um, you're you're limiting your audience to just who who's who's able or willing to log into that Zoom. And I think willing is the part of that because that's where I've been burning out quick, is being in that Zoom and sort of locked into that Zoom. Yeah. Even if you're not on camera, even if you're on mic, you're still sort of like you feel involved in like you have to be there for it. Whereas if it's a YouTube video, I can take my phone and go to the bathroom with it, or I can like <laughs> you can walk into the kitchen or something. But I can't necessarily do that with Zoom, or it doesn't. It feels weird if I do. Like it's it's a different feeling. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you're 100 percent right on that one. Um, the West Kingdom, we just did a virtual court um, last weekend, or, um, and it it was really good because what they did was uh, anyone who was getting awards. Mm-hmm. contacted them or contacted their uh, significant others or friends and mm-hmm. said, Hey, who needs to be in court for this person? And so then they got a list of, you know, people to, that they sent out a zoom invite that cause they called the court. Right. So they didn't just call, you know, the people who were winning awards, they called a whole bunch of people. So people didn't know who was winning awards. Oh, but the people who are winning awards actually had, um, you know, friends and supporters in the Zoom as well, along with their their majesties and their highnesses. Um, and then everybody else who wasn't called into court or called to sit at court right. uh, watched the, the YouTube. A lot of stream. Right. Yeah. Hmm. So it was it. I, I thought that was a really good idea. Yeah. Um, and it was a lot of fun. And then, like, everybody who was in court dressed for court. Right. You know, that's clever. Yeah. I've, I've seen, so there's actually been some complaints and this is sort of, I guess this is off the topic of web shows, but I wanted to sort of talk about all the virtual things when I talk, when I said web shows. So, um, mm-hmm. so I have noticed that with, so Meridia's does, they, they just call everybody specifically, right? Here's, here's who's going to call it. I actually like that. 
Mm-hmm. Dude, I, 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 I hate surprises, which, which, <laughs> you know, I, I hate in-person surprises because it, there's an expectation of reaction. Right. Here's a present for you. Open it. I'm like, I don't want to open this in front of you because if I have a, a crappy face, you're going to be sad. Right. <laughs> but it works to me the same way. There's an anxiety of, am I going to get called in? Did I do something? Am I going to get called in? Yeah. You know, I'm like, am I going to get, am I going to get elevated today? There's no chance I'm getting elevated today. But the thoughts right. are, right. It's like, it's <laughs> a dumb thing. Um, but with virtual court, I know. I They publish list. Cool. I'm not on the court list. I don't have to worry about it. There's no anxiety, right? <laughs> um, but I, but yeah, but what you do lose that, ooh, a surprise factor, right? Which some people enjoy. Yeah, I know we've done a couple of times where they've like they called the mom in for an award, and then the kid also got an award. Oh uh, right? yeah, or like the, or like they called the kid and the mom got something, or like or, or they called the husband and he was actually getting something. They've done that yeah. a couple of times, which has been kind of cute or whatever, you know. And that's so that's yeah. kind of nice, right. Uh, but yeah, so that's that, that's a thing. Um, but yeah, it, it's just, it's a, if you, if you do the courts, well, if you produce them, well, you can still get the effect of, yay, it's a court, mm-hmm. um, but we've had a lot of technical issues with courts that I've seen that has killed the effect, in my opinion, that I'm, I'm that, that hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Un- unfortunately, I mean, look at the beginning of the show today. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This happens even on, even on StreamYard. Like, again, this is why I'm not yeah. like, even on StreamYard, this happens because the computers are computers. Yeah, well, and you know, we've been playing this for weeks, and right. of course, my computer decides to take crap this morning. Right. But that's the thing. Well, one of the things that I have to mention about these shows is the audience, right? I think that they are the most important thing about it because they give us, um, you know, feedback and they give us an audience, you know, <laughs> like even if it's one person, if I've only got one person watching the show that day, I'm going to do the show right. for that one person because they are important enough without that, without that one person, I'm, you know, it's just a couple guys sitting around talking. So without that, then we've got nothing. So I wanted to say thank you to all the people who come out and watch. Yeah, no, I, I agree, and that's but you know, so so we've got seven people watching right now, which is for, for a Sunday morning show. That's that's a good audience, right? I'm okay with seven to ten. Cool. Mm-hmm. No, I know. Also, I get rewatches later, and people see this and, and they enjoy the content. And this is also not necessarily an interesting topic for most people, so mm-hmm. I'm surprised this is gonna be a low attendance show. Um, but yeah, so the audience helps, and, and I love the. I, I want to tell people, you know, you like, follow, subscribe, click all the buttons. We need those buttons. I've never realized that I would rely so much on likes and subscriptions, but oh my god, do I? <laughs> I need the buttons clicked so bad. Um, <laughs> it's not that I care about being famous. I don't care about being like like or lo- like whatever, right? But doing that is the one thing that I know I've done something right. Yeah, and that's all it is. And it's such a weird little thing, right? And, and those subscriptions, like okay, cool, my subscription count goes up. As long as that count goes up, I know I'm doing the right thing. If it yeah. stalls or stops or anything, like I'm like, okay, what did I what did I do wrong? Did I say something? Did I miss something? Am I do I need to do more? You know, hot high. Also, <laughs> catch yes, the most. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised my little one isn't out here screaming. Yeah. Normally, when I'm when I get all, with the headphones on, I start talking to the computer. Uh, she thinks it's her turn to come and talk. So I mean, that's that's clearly what it is. So, oh, she's, I, she's eating her breakfast. So, oh, that's what it is. Yeah, she, mm-hmm. she's hungry. Yeah, I she's still have something about um about about technology. So let's start with that for a second. So, so there's web shows which are primarily talk shows, and there's online teaching at virtual collegiums. Can you talk about equipment or tech investment for teaching? Uh, okay, so the things that I would look at for, and, and this actually, let me let me let me talk about what I use, and, and you're yeah. gonna be like, what? I'm running this entire platform on a $30, $20 webcam from Walmart, a $20 green screen on a PVC frame, and a clip desk light. Hell yeah. (laughs) Uh, Actually, I I correct that. I've also got two fluorescent lights up. And so those are probably the most expensive purchase I made was the two fluorescent lights that are up there because it helps the green screen work better on a usual day. So I have spent maybe $100 on tech for the entire thing. 
with the exception of StreamYard. So that's the one thing that I would talk about is the thing is, is, is a platform to stream off of. Um, so Remoot also mentioned OBS. And I'll, so we'll talk about that for a second too. And actually, uh, actually, Logan, so tell me about what your tech, what, what tech things do you have? What did you purchase? What's your sort of setup look like? And we'll talk about software. So uh, right now, um, I'm still running off of my little Dell laptop. Right. Um, with the inboard camera. Um, I do use headphone and microphone just mm -hmm. so that, you know, we're not catching a lot of ambient sound from around because, you know, I've got animals and they like to run crazy and everything and you know you still get that but just not as bad not that constant right background noise um a oh i think about 10 shows in i bought myself uh, a, again 20 dollar green screen i've got here i'll lift up and you can see uh, oh yeah the the shower curtain rod with mm -hmm. the, yeah so that just i clip up the green screen and just make sure that it's flat. Off you go. Um, other than that, I haven't gotten anything else yet. Uh, I'm going to be investing here in a little while because I'm, for some reason, I'm a glutton for punishment and I'm going to start a, yet another show. Yay! Yeah. Um, this one, is it's not an SCA show, but I think SCA people like it. Um, but that's, it's, it's still in the works. So I can't talk about it too much. I know about it. I <laughs> it's yeah. beautiful. Oh, you, you and as far, it. as far as lighting goes, uh, I've got this lovely, Oh, I don't know if I can do it. No, it's not going to work, but yeah. Oh it's, yeah. Just it's, a lamp. Lovely, it, it's better than just a lamp. It's, it's, it's a lovely leg lamp. You know? Oh, it, oh, it's a Christmas story leg lamp. It is yeah, it's a Christmas story leg lamp. Nice. <laughs> Because that's what you yeah, 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 yeah. That that uh, gives a little bit of warm lighting, and then during the show, because it's nighttime, like right now, I'm, I've got the windows open, so I've got sunlight coming in. Um, the leg lamp gives like a little bit of a, a warm, and then I've got a, a brighter LED uh, lamp above me, which will you know brightens everything up. Uh, but the the having that extra little warm light keeps you from you know turning into a zombie or getting washed out so right which which has been my problem i end up turning like apparently i'm very i'm yellower than i thought <laughs> arm will occasionally mix with the green screen because of reflection yeah. things i'm like why am i blurry yeah. yeah i just gave up on it today so okay so yeah so I, yeah so technology wise the get a decent camera get a decent mic so my camera actually i use the my mic and camera on the same thing uh, it is the next thing I'm upgrading is I'm going to get a, a separate mic because I've noticed my I'm not I'm not happy with my sound. It worked. Mm -hmm. I've been running shows for months off of it and people can hear me. Right. That was the important part. Can people hear you? Um, but I'm not happy with it, like quality wise. So I, I'm going to upgrade my mic because I want to. Um, I, th I found one for like 120 bucks the other day that I, I'm interested in looking at. I've got a couple buddies that also do podcasts and stuff that I've looked at. And like, yeah, yeah. Here, here's a good one, like a, a mid range. I don't need like professional singer level, whatever, like $3,000 mic. I need like a hundred dollar mic. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's my next upgrade. Um, but yeah, the thing I think uh, that you're looking at for that is, is something you can get uh, mic, but also cameras, the cameras depend on what you're teaching. So if you're just doing a lecture, the $20, $30 came from Walmart, that's forward facing. And I've got like mine adjusts up and down, like it's got some movement, which I like. And I've just got a little a little uh, PVC stand. I literally built a little, just a, a square, so it's behind my laptop, just so I can yeah. move if I need to. Mm -hmm. uh, something else you can get is, is they make like stands for them. So if you're doing things that are like handiwork stuff, like stuff where you have to look at things, getting something as a top-down camera helps out. Um, I see a lot of people with like goosenecks for their phones and things, yeah. and so they can have their phone mounted like this and looking at their work. That's yeah. Thing. Um, but once you start doing that, then you've got two cameras, and that's where the, the issue comes in: is how do you deal with two cameras in in Zoom? And it's it's difficult, right? Mm -hmm. But things like Streamyard, or uh, somebody mentioned OBS earlier, are the way to handle that. So OBS, in my opinion, is a lot more tech heavy. So OBS is is uh, 
it's a it's a free software so go look it up go search obs uh on on google it's completely free you know open source code um but you have to know what you're doing right you it, it, it's sort of like a video editing program except for streaming yeah. right yeah which works but you got to sort of know how to do it um but things like Streamyard is uh, and you can ask logan now it, it's almost dummy proof like it's like big buttons, point and click, like you know, and it, yeah. it lets you control it a lot more. It's it does all the stuff OBS does, but a lot simpler in my opinion. Um, and 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 now Streamyard is simpler, and it's not going to do, you know, like exactly what OBS does. But once again, what do you, what do you need? Right, is, is what you're looking at. You know what I mean? Um, and like like Cal was saying. It he taught me StreamYard literally in 15 minutes. Right. Like 15 minutes, I was up and running. And I was just like, I thought this was going to be more difficult. <laughs> yeah. It looks it looks way harder than it actually is, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. So uh, so yeah, that's what I recommend is, is find something like that. Uh, find a good software. Get a get a a, a decent you know a, a moderate camera and mic and, and check your lighting. Um, cause that's, if you can do those things and honestly, the, if you have a good phone, anybody who's got an iPhone or anything that's a, which huh, look, I'm a giant nerd. That's my background on my iPhone. Cause I'm, <laughs> that's the thing I do. Um, I, I didn't, I didn't mean to show that off on camera, but, uh, -huh, there you go. Um, <laughs> but you can also use your phone. I honestly, so I actually had a one stream I did. It was like two or three shows ago on coffee with Cal where my power went out five minutes into the show and I ran the rest of the phone show off my phone. And I mean, other than you knew I was on my phone because I was holding it, like you didn't notice a difference. Like it's hard to tell, right? So the cameras are good on these phones. If you're just doing casual stuff like that and you need something that you can see your work, grab a phone, grab, grab a clip, uh, some sort of like gooseneck clip for it and rock and roll, man. It's they, These phones are amazing. Like ridiculous. Absolutely. All right, let's see. Checking my, uh, Shimon, yes. Shimon asked, is, is this my green screen before makeup? Yes, this is my green screen before it's makeup. This is in a raw state. Uh, you know, literally, I found this on Amazon for like the, like twenty twenty five dollars. It's just a green screen. It actually came in three. I've got a green, a black, and a white because they're like they're like actually. I think they're they're tended to be backdrops for like, like yeah. backdrops. Um, and I built. A, I went to Home Depot and or Lowe's or whatever and bought some chunks of PVC and built a frame. So oh, oh, I will. Uh, so you can see the ignore the dirty but PVC frame. That's my, my my treadmill back there. Um, and I think that that's important. Having having a good background is important. Um, I've noticed a lot of people in, in in certain things where you just it, you get you get distracted by the, what's behind them. Like right now, I'm looking at your plant back there. I won't even lie. You look at your hair, and that's kind of funny to me. Like you have a green, green I have, I have plant hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, um, <laughs> but like when you have just a green screen or just a, a generic background, one you can do fun stuff with it, which is which is always inter entertaining. But also, it gets the distraction away from behind you to what's to you. And I think that's important. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, question for Logan. Here we go. Uh oh. So what would you say was the biggest challenge for somebody wanting to share via a web show would be? So I waited on basic equipment. What, what was your biggest challenge for your web show, for you starting your web show? Um, honestly, the biggest, the biggest challenge is just having the gumption to do it. Just make it in your mind. Um, like I said, when I initially thought of the idea for the show, I was going to pawn it off on Helga. You tried. Uh, you tried. It, yeah. You? I mean, I, as I thought, you know, hey, they're doing this show. You know, maybe they want to do that or she wants to do this show as well. Right. And like we we had a long discussion about it after she said, "Yeah, you should do it." And I was just like, "Huh?" And then she explained to me why she thought I should do it as opposed to her, and all of her reasonings make sense. You know what I mean? Like, um, it, it's and then then it was just okay. I we've decided that the best way to do this show is if I am going to do it. Am I going to do it? Yep. You know, you just once you decide that yes, you're going to do it. Um, 
like I was lucky. I had them already doing a show. So like, they were like, this is, this is all the stuff that you need to do. I was like, okay, I will do all this stuff. Um, which is good because now that there are more of us out here, there are more people to ask, Hey, how do I do this show? Like, I want to do a show. Can you set me on the right path? Right. Um, and or, especially, you, or you see somebody doing some neat thing like oh man how'd you do that thing right yeah exactly yeah. um and i will say one thing cal here is really good at setting people's up for success just say <laughs> <Hey, laughs> it at your service yeah i mean he, he's got his own little production company now so well it's not a company yet but it's i have not incorporated we, we have not incorporated. producing oh, <clears throat> We have people. We 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 are a collective. We are bored. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the biggest thing is actually getting it done. Right. Um, and if you have people to help you, that's the way to go. And you do have people to help you because you're watching this show and you see two of us right now. Yep. Reach out. Yeah. There. Yeah. Exactly. There are a hundred people. Like I, I am one man, and that's one of the, one of the reasons. So, um, I, I, I I'm I'm good at what I do. And I, I and I, I know how to do that. I'm also a project manager, so part of my thing is is teaching other people to do the things so that I don't have to do the things, right? So once I got good at it, sort of figured out what I was doing, and I'm not saying I'm the best at what I'm doing. Don't get me wrong, but once I figured out what I was doing, I was okay. Let me start teaching other people to do this so that when I get sick, we can still run these shows, right? Mm -hmm. I miss one of my shows, whatever. If I have to cancel a coffee chat or or what's playing Wednesday, not a big deal. It's just me. It's my reputation, not a huge deal. Everybody understands. But if I've got to cancel Outland's royalty because I'm sick, I'm going to feel like crap. Now, I know that Bailey and Rissa aren't going to care. They're going to be like, oh, that's cool. We'll do it in Zoom. They know how to do it already. They can figure it out. They can just, they'll just do a Facebook Live. They'll figure it out, right? right. But I feel bad about it. I'm actually more nervous about their shows than I am about mine. Yeah. That's the weirdest thing. I, that was the weirdest thing. I, I'm, I'm better now. Like, I've sort of found my groove now. But, like, I've done, I had done three months of shows. And then I got on the first show that little D. I was shaking, dude. <laughs> like, what is going on? Like, I mean, I don't know these people. Like, I've never met Bailey in real life, right? I met him through Helga. Helga's like, hey, Cal can help you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, which she was right. I offered. It was like it wasn't like she threw me under the bus. I offered. Yeah. I, I've never met Bailey. I've never met Narissa. I don't I know nothing of the Outlands. And now I'm running a show for for the King and Queen. Like, that's what? Huh. You know, I was panicking. You know, three or four shows in, I'm like, okay, cool. I got this. I know I because it's the exact same process. The buttons are the same. The whole like literally, you know, but it's that thing of it's not mine. So if I screw yeah. it up, it's bad for them. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, <sighs> that's that's the biggest. Well, and that's like just doing any show, like when you when you have guests on, you mm -hmm. want to make sure that they have a good time um and they have fun and you don't do anything that makes them look bad. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you did something actually, and, and not to not to talk about backstage, but I saw uh, for your Ask the Nights episode the other day. So you, you sent out like a you sent out like a questionnaire ahead of time um, of are there any topics you don't want to discuss? Are there is like sort of like you sort of ask some questions ahead of time to make sure there's no like yeah problem areas. I think that's interesting because I, I know Bailey does the same thing when he's talking about some of the, to some of the dukes and stuff. He says, okay, you know, because being king is hard, there, and there's some some yeah. difficult and some like unfun things that happen. He was asking, is there anything you don't want to talk about? Is there is there a topic that comes up we don't we need to steer away from? And I think that's that's an interesting thing that I've never had to do because none of my stuff has ever been like controversial, I guess. But so right. what what was the what was your logic behind that? So well, just like we were saying, like I want my guests to be comfortable. Um right. and some of them are, you know, they're SCA famous. Right. Um and you know, you especially like when you have like dukes on, like you were saying. They see some of the, the the crappiest parts of our game, um, and some of them are just like uh, like I, I haven't had anybody say that that they don't want to talk about anything except for politics. Like they didn't want any political questions, and that and I'm they just wanted to talk about the SCA SCA fighting SCA fun. You know what I mean, like. They did not want to talk about what was what's going on outside of the SA right now because it's I mean it's it's a big thing, you know? <laughs> like it's and it's depressing a lot of times. So 
they, you know, they just wanted to, to stick to the fun stuff. They wanted to have a good time. And that's what I want. Right. I want the shows to be fun. I want the guests to have a good time so that they come back. You know, right. one of the things about my shows, if I have reoccurring guests, when we do special episodes um, where we'll do like a round table with several past guests or a panel or something like that. So it, it's just, I, I don't, I, I want my guests to be comfortable and I don't want to spring anything on them. And then the other part of that is we take questions from the audience. Mm. It allows me to, um, to vet those questions a little bit better for my guests. Right. Some people will ask some very pointed questions that they don't want to answer on air. Now, one thing that I do do is <laughs> do do mm-hmm. is I ask all of my guests that if we don't get to a person's question uh, that comes from the comments during the live show, we try to go back and answer those questions because I want everybody's questions to be answered. Sure. Um, and you know, I've had, I've had one person ask one question where the guest said, let's talk about this privately. Was their answer to the question in the comments, which is, which I like, that's, that's that's the engagement that I want. You know what I mean? I want people to have their questions answered, but I want, I don't want to put anybody on the spot either. Right. Yeah. So when I do Outland Royalty, and so, so for like for my shows, I don't care because I, I I know the questions I'm reading them, so I sort of I can track what's going on. Somebody asked something that was like, uh, "Hey Cal, what's your favorite food?" Like I'm, whatever, I'm gonna ignore that. Like, that's not relevant to the question. I might bring it up because it's funny or what, but like it's not relevant to the topic. Right. Um, but like when I'm doing Ellen's Royal Tea, I don't know these people. I don't know the questions. I don't know the story. So when they ask something like, you know, uh, what was the Queen's favorite time where she did blah blah blah, I don't know what that means. Right. I don't know behind that. So, so what we do is I actually I, I'll copy the questions into the private chat. Mm-hmm. So there's, uh, for those of you who aren't seeing the stream yard, uh, we have both a comment stream and a private chat stream. So the private chat is only being seen by the people in the stream currently. So only Logan and I can see it. Uh, it's used for things that we can conversate or we can, oh, hey, hey, let's talk about this topic next or whatever. I don't use it as much when I'm doing these kind of shows because we're just talking. So it's sort of natural when we need to. Uh, but like when we were doing the, the dice show, we used it for some of that of technical problems in the background or, hey, I can't see the dice or whatever. Um, mm. But I use it for that. So what I'll do is I'll copy the questions in the private chat and then her majesty or his majesty can then look at it and go, I'm going to ask this question and then just ask the questions from there. And then as they come up, then I'll pop them up on the screen as they ask for them. Right. Yeah. But that way they can deal with their own landmines. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not asking them some question that I don't know anything about. I'm not popping it up and going, Hey, you should answer this question. Cause I don't know that that's not, that's going to be something controversial, right? That's their management. Right. Um, it also, it's, it's interesting with them is they don't have to watch the comments and they actually yeah. like them because I don't mind seeing the comments cause I can pay attention to this and sort of watch it over here. Yeah. Some folks end up doing this the, during their shows. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, Reading the comment, like I know, I was, I was uh, when Master Shimon was on, he was having trouble not reading the comments the entire time. I thought like, <laughs> he's used to being in the comments, right, um, right. So yeah, but that's a that's a thing. So yeah, because you're right, there, those landmines exist, and people there's and there's two there's two kinds of people. There's people that are going to ask because it's funny, or because they're being a dick. Yeah, like and, and you don't know you don't know which it's going to be. In either way, it may be something they're not comfortable talking about. So yeah, that's a that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Gotta gotta keep them uh, gotta keep them guests happy. That's right, man. No more. <laughs> um, let's see. So uh, actually, in uh, let me mention. Let me scroll back here because there, there was a comment about uh, time consumption. Then I want to talk about the I want to talk about the future of web shows. Let's find it. Nope. Okay. Uh, so I'll, I actually so Heart of the Greenwood mentioned it. And this is uh, El- Elfric Hart, who's a Elfric Hart, who's a member from South Downs. He's a bowyer. He has some amazing videos on bows and bow making and or string making and arrow making and shooting and just he's an all-around ranger kind of guy um nice. he was saying that his even doing a monthly like once a month show like just producing videos for him was difficult mm-hmm. uh, it was time to him and he's, and he's right so i've noticed actually so I, so I run three shows on this channel i help outlands i do outlands royalty tech and and i've got two more in the pipeline and then plus helping you with ask the night's live um I also run Polly and Perspectives. So we, we do a, a, oh, hi, Uncle Fergus. Yes, 
Thank you for the cup, Fergus. You're, you're all <laughs> uh, you're your highness as well. My cup's amazing. Um, actually, so, so this is this is actually the second time I've used it. I had to use it last night because I was I was scared to put coffee in it for the first time on camera. So I was like, I'm gonna drink. So I drank a cup of coffee last night out of it because I was like, it's, it has no handle. So I was like, I don't know how this is gonna work. So I can only pour it to about there with coffee, and then I just hold the top. It worked out fine. Okay. Um, I was concerned, so I had to test it. Um, where was I going? Uh, oh yeah. So, but also run Poly and Perspectives. So Poly and Perspectives is a, is a show we record uh, twice a month, and then I cut it up into chunks and we we drop them on a weekly basis. But I we record four hour, three or four hour, like three hours at a time, and then mm -hmm. I cut it into 30, 45 minute episodes. That show, that singular show, takes up more of my time than all the other shows combined. Well, uh, yeah, it's especially when you're into editing. Yeah. Yeah. And I did not realize how much that, that was time consuming. And, and like, I'm not good at it. I'm, I, I've, I've, I've never done video editing in the past. I, this is literally, I started, I was like, I'll start doing, I'll learn it with this show. Why not? So I've, I've sort of got my system down. I'm quicker now than I was on the first episode. We're on episode four now, um, or recording four. We do like three, we do usually two or three episodes per episode. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm faster now than I was because I've sort of got a system. But oh my God, that takes so much time because you're talking three hours of recording time. It takes me probably two hours to do initial like rough cut to get it sort of get all the bad stuff out. I've got another 30 minutes of getting the in, getting everybody's intros cut and timed correctly in the, in the intro. And then I got to go in and add all the, cause I add question slides at the bottom for everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can make all those and add those and get the timing right. That's just, it's time consuming. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't know if you, if you got to watch last week's show, or, or thir Thursday show, but um, I did a couple of videos for mm -hmm. my guests. Um, and those, those are short little like minute and a half videos, right. right? Each one of those took at least two to three hours to make. And right. that's not, I mean, that's not dealing with, uh, you know, a live recording. That was just mostly pictures, um, but just doing all the titles and, getting it so that things pop on the, to the music track correctly and all that kind of stuff and that your effects are in. And then uh, thinking that you're done and watching it and then noticing that you completely screwed up something. So you have to go back, you know, and then you end up watching that same video like 30, 40 times. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you get to the end, you are done. Yeah, You're like, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> yep. but it, yeah. So it, it is time consuming and like just setting up this show is like for, for my guys, it's, it's setting up the guest as far ahead a time as I can. Right. And then um, getting into the conversation, you know, like you have to message the guest and you have to, you have to talk to them. So they're the talent, right? right. You gotta talk to the talent. You got to convince the talent that they want to do the show and then you have to make the talent feel good about doing the show. And then once you have the talent convinced, then you can bring them in. You saw this this mm -hmm. while you did the whole process, but yeah. um, then you bring them, you know, into another meeting, and you add your uh, your producer and your art director, and you know, then you're like, okay, so this is what I need from you guys. This is the show. This is what I need from you guys. And then you gotta wait to see if the talent is going to give you their headshots and all that kind of stuff. Yep. So then the art director can go and make the banner and then the uh, producer can get it all set up. So like it, it's, it snowballs. And if you are all of those people, if you are the producer and the host and the art director, like you're doing all that stuff. Right. This is a job. You know, people get paid for this, right? Some, <laughs> some people do. So actually, I have a question for you. Speaking of paying for all this stuff, yep. um, let's talk about Patreon. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, I know that you've got a Patreon uh, that you set up. Um, basically, it's not to make money off of. It's just to continue to like pay for, um, like pay, pay for StreamYard. So yeah, so, so call, call for a thing, right? 
Uh, so uh, my basic costs are, I, I spend $25 a month, give or take, on StreamYard. Um, and I have been since March. Um, I also pay for, so uh, Logan, you can thank the patrons for your new intro, actually. Yeah. Because that came out of that budget. Uh, that's Sweet. Yeah, so so there you go. So th- thank you. Thank you to our patrons. So I'll put them back on the screen. Thank you to our patrons. Uh, actually, I, have, I have one more to add to that. I am sorry. I'm going to apologize to Toka. I forgot to add update. I got a new patron yesterday, actually. So I'll add that. Ooh, um, but yeah, so so that's the kind of stuff I use. So I'm in, in doing things like uh, StreamYard, doing new intros, doing new outros. Um, you know, so yeah, so right, right now it is covering costs. Uh, but also I do um, part of the rewards we do is we do like I, I did cu- custom game boards. The custom game boards I sent out this month cost sixty uh, ish dollar. Basically, it was one month of subscriptions to do the the the, the mailing. <laughs> and honestly, the, the games cost like a couple bucks to do plus my time. The mailing was like forty five dollars. Yeah, yeah. Keep God, mailing's expensive right now, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so so that's that's where that a lot of the money is going to is and and then but that's why that's why I'm doing quarterly. Um, but yeah, that's I started that because I realized I was spending money. And I I've been unemployed since March, and mm-hmm. I've been funding this since March by myself. And whereas right. I'm not, and this is not me like, oh, what was me support me right? No, so, no, no, no. Um, and I was like, you know what, I need to do something. So I actually the Patreon was has been up since probably June, mm-hmm. but I felt like an ass for asking for money. Well, and then, so here's the other thing, like, um, and I know it's the same one between two peers. We've been getting commercials and like building commercials for our shows. Mm -hmm. We do it for free (laughs) because we, we don't want to ask people for money, especially like the SCA merchants who are like the bulk of our advertisers because they're having a hard time right now too. But unfortunately the reason why, commercials exist is because you got to pay for your shows. <laughs> so like we're, I'd, I'd still love to do um, commercials and I'm still going to do commercials for anyone who acts. Um, but I am going to reluctantly start asking people to, you know, chuck five bucks at the Patreon just to keep the whole group of shows going if they can. And, it, and so a lot of things that are another thing that a lot of people don't know about Patreon is you can make a like a one time donation if you can't do um, if you can't do like monthly or whatever. But even if you just do a dollar a month, that's that really, really helps out. I, yeah. Just yep. to keep it. Right. <laughs> Yeah. So, so, and so in my plans for that, so like long term, right? I, yeah. My goal is not to make, to make money. So far, I have, I have profited zero dollars. I think, well, actually, let me correct that. This game board here is for my personal use and it came out of my wood supply for Patreon. <laughs> that's how I'm going to profit is I'm, I'm going to make new game boards to go to my game board box to go to events with when we have events again. Right. That's the kind of profit I'm taking out of Patreon, but it's because I can buy a sheet of wood for, you know, for doing the game boards and I'm just going to cut a couple more. Right. Yeah. Um, but like you know, like I, but I'm not looking to make money. Uh, but what I do want to be able to do is is be able to buy a new mic or, hey, you know, lo- your your headset goes out next week. Crap, we got to get you a headset because you got to be able to do your show, right? That's what I want. Yeah. I want to have money available for a new show, and they, that person can't afford to buy a mic or something. And be like, I can just send them here's a twenty dollar mic, right? I want to be able yeah. to do that. Um, Okay. Yeah. I'll, yes. I'll update the description with the thing in a minute. Sorry. I can't. Oh, can I? I can, I can update the description while I'm sitting here. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> it's I, love, I mentioned I love StreamYard. Um, I can update the description mid show. I know I can do that. Um, but yeah. So, so that's my plan. So, the plan for money is I, I'm never going to profit. Uh, also, so um, not everybody's seeing this, but I, there's a group on Facebook called K- KK Production Staff. Uh, that basically anybody who runs a show within my umbrella, within our umbrella, um, is in that group. Um, so whether it's a, a host, a technical person, nope, apparently I can't. Okay, a host, technical person, um, or uh, a, a Silent Herald, which I'm working on getting more Silent Heralds available. Um, they're in oh. the and we'll, we'll talk about that in a second too. Um, mm. We're gonna go two hours today. Um, <laughs> I wasn't sure this is going to be 30 minutes or two hours, but I realized the two of you are still together. We're going to talk for a while, um, <laughs> but I, I'm going to be posting in that group uh, as money gets spent because I'm very open about money. 
Um, I wish we as a society would talk about money more. Um, I know money is always a tab. Money and politics, money, politics, and religion are always taboo subjects. Um, I wish that was not a, not the case. Whereas I hate talking about politics. Sometimes you need to. Yeah. Sometimes you need to talk about religion. Sometimes you need to talk about money because it's a thing. If we become more comfortable with it, then it's a we as people have more power. And that, that's a whole rant for another show about the power of the worker and money and things. But later, um, but I have no problem with it. But it makes people uncomfortable. So I kept it that private group, but I will be per- talking to my the staff of KK Productions about how the money is for Patreon is being spent. So uh, if you do put money into the Patreon, please know that it is being used responsibly and being reported to at least the 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 staff within, so that people are monitoring. It's not just Cal spending all your money on uh, on on coffee and things. Which I mean, I might buy myself coffee occasionally because I like <laughs> coffee. Why not? Why not? <laughs> So yeah, um, and yeah. So I, I posted the Patreon link in the comments. If it's not showing up, it's on the Facebook page, and I'll post it again. Um, I'll post a link to it uh, after the show. And I, I tell you, for all our lovely listeners out there, one of the best things that you can do to help out, um, if especially if you you know, not everybody can provide monetarily, but like, share, flat snap the hell out of that like button, you know. <laughs> subscribe to the to the things and then especially the share right don't just share bug your friends about watching the show hey you should watch this show you'd like it not this show because i'm boring but (laughs) (laughs) watch all the other ones yeah yeah because word of mouth is the best advertiser you know what i mean yep yeah the every that viewer count going up is is the biggest thing we get the likes coming in you know that that helps helps us know we're doing what we're doing so yeah um, all right. So you, so you, you, perked up about silent heralds. You want, you want to talk about that? Yeah. Well, I just wanted to put out the call because, um, so silent heralds, if you haven't heard the term before, it is, um, basically heralds who know sign language, um, who can, uh, help out. So a, a lot of our hearing impaired folks have been kind of left behind in, in these shows and everything uh, because we don't have silent heralds, but you're working on that, right? I mean, we're, we're trying to get some folks together uh, so we can throw in some silent heralds into yep. all of our shows yeah, so that it it's even more appealing and more people can, can jump in and watch. Yeah. So I've talked to you. So, so it came up. Um, so I knew silent heralds existed. We have, we have a, a, a deaf person here in Meridia's that, that participates a lot. And we've done a lot of stuff in Zoom, and like so, there was a thing we did where we were doing a like an ANS exhibit where we all sort of came in and showed our things off. It was a like a tournament thing we all did, and she was involved. So when we were all in the Zoom together, all the participants were in the Zoom with the judges. We all made sure we sat and looked at the camera and were very clear and sort of talked slow because she can also read lips, and that helped. Because and she also had her husband standing with her, sort of helping sign as she needed to, right? But that's difficult, right? So now she, she now can't participate because she can't hear us. Mm-hmm. And Zoom with 10 people, even the little bit of background noise that other people have is too much, especially when they're when you're talking about they're, they're also very small images on a screen because it starts being gallery view. Or she has to go to speaker view, which then switches off because the moderator coughed or something, right? You have that issue. So she hasn't been able to participate. So she asked, uh, she reached out to me when I started What Makes a Night and said, hey, do, are, are you going to have Silent Heralds? Can you have Silent Heralds? Would you like Silent Heralds? And I was like, sure. Never considered it because I've never, like, I, I don't, nobody ever asked. And, and that's that's on me. I, sh- I should have thought about it, but it's not something I considered because it was just me doing a show, right? I didn't want to burden somebody else because that's a lot of time for somebody. And I talk very fast and very Southern. So <laughs> is not easy. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, so especially like Silent Hills are used to working from sort of a script. You see the ones on TV, they're working from a script. They're not listening to what the guy says. They're reading a script and signing. So you know, easy for them. But a live show like this, especially with multiple people talking, is a whole thing. Uh, so yeah, so she reached out to uh, a silent, silent from, from Trimeris, who apparently is amazing and has done like she's done like the pins at grand courts and signed for everybody, and you know, so she's used to multiple people. Uh, and she's been helping out with some of them. Uh, and there's a couple others I've reached out to. But if you know a Silent Herald out there, send them to me. Let me add them to the staff group. Because basically what I want to do is I've got a list of shows we're doing. 
here's the calendar, here's the shows, and here's a slot for Silent Herald. If you're a Silent Herald and want to help, you click a button, you sign up, and we'll put you in that slot, and we'll jump you in. You know, we'll, we'll put you in the show, and you can sign. Um, but know that it's this format. All the shows are live. All the shows are non-scripted. You just got to keep up. And that's the yeah. hard part. Because <laughs> um, Marie did amazing, man. She, she, we, did, we did one episode with What Makes a Night with her, uh, one or two, one or two with her on. Um, she missed one of the episodes. And she, man, she was just down there flying. <laughs> um, you know, I talked to Libby afterwards, who's the, the person I'm ready is. I was like, hey, how was that? You know, did, do we need, did that work? And she's like, yeah, it was great. She goes, because apparently, and I didn't know this, um, signing is, it, when somebody's signing for you, they sign different based on the person. Hmm. Based on their, like, so like, if it's a, a big, boisterous, loud person, they sign big and boisterous and loud. But if it's a small, meek person, they sign small and meek. Like, it's a different, the facial expressions and sort of the general mannerisms are different. And it shows the person reading that they can, who they're talking for. Ah, see, that's something I didn't know. Yeah, I, so apparently in person, they'll actually turn their body and shift. Like if, if it's like you and I are on either side of them, they'll turn towards me and sign when they're signing for me and they'll turn towards you and sign for you. So it's an obvious shift. Uh, you can't do that in in YouTube or on screen. You have to just because yeah. you're having looking forward. So yeah, so apparently there's a different mannerisms. And I didn't know that. So, so you need to have them on this show and go through all that, like let them explain Ooh. how crazy it's because like that was really interesting to me. I've never, I never even knew that. And I have friends who sign and they've never like, it, it's kind of, it's kind of like us talking. There's some things that you just don't explain because you, you figure it's automatic, you know what right. I mean? That's pretty damn cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was like, huh. Uh, so I learned to do. So yeah. So so yeah. That's something. So if you know a silent hero, uh, any any silent heralds, and we have to call them silent heralds because they are not ASL interpreters. Because to be an ASL interpreter, you have to be licensed in like their yeah. process. So we are calling them silent heralds, mm -hmm. even though my herald brain that bugs because they're not actually heralding for me. That's a whole thing, but I'm okay with it. Silent heralds are what we're calling them. Um, if you know one or are one, reach out to me and I and uh, your highness, I see you. I will reach out to you after the show and we'll talk about that. Um, or if you're a Silent Herald and want to have, be on a, a future episode of Coffee with Cal to talk about Silent Herald stuff, we'll do that. I think that's a great idea for an episode. Yeah, um, I want to see that episode. Yeah, I, I, that's no, that, that's because, yeah, that's the smart thing. I like that. I will do that. I, I, I think I've got one more in February that I don't have scheduled yet. So I will, I, I'm always looking for topics. Or to plug that, if you have a topic that really burns your burns your biscuits or grinds your gears, just Peter Griffin would say, <laughs> if you've got a grind your gears thing, reach out to me. I love the hearing the things. So that's why actually uh, um, uh, Katrina, that's what she reached out. She's like, Hey, I want, I want to talk about how all peers are dicks. And I was like, all right, let's, let's work with that. <laughs> <laughs> you sort of choose your topic back to let's talk about volunteers and officership, not how all peers are dicks. Like, but it wasn't that I'm, I'm joking. Katrina, I love you. <laughs> um, but it was her first topic was I'm mad about this thing. We went, okay, let's talk about this thing you're mad about. Let's find a topic out of that. Right. And we found a topic to talk about. that was a positive topic to talk about the mad thing she was mad about. Yeah. Um, so if you have a thing like that you want to talk about, reach out. I would love to hear more people's opinions. I love to talk to people. I, I, I like this show because we get to get to talk. And it's not an interview show. Uh, that was one of the things I, when I started my channel, I was like, I'm not doing interview shows. I'm not going to interview a person. Like, I like having guests. I like having talk. I like talking with them. But I want it to be about topics, not about the person itself. Um, because there are like a thousand interview shows out there right now. No offense. <laughs> oh, boy. It, it's also it's easy to I think interview shows are easy to do. Or the the topic is easy, right? They're not yeah. easy. Don't get me wrong, but like it's easy to go. Oh, I'm at this person, right? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, like I I have a a standard list of questions that you'll see on just about every single one of my shows. <laughs> she she's not in the past. <laughs> she, yeah, she has opinions. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh god. But uh, yeah, I mean I. I have a standard list of questions that I normally ask. Um, I don't always ask them in the same way. Right. Because, you know, that would get boring. But, you know, you, you've got your, your standards and then you got the, the really meaty stuff uh, that you get into. And then, God, I love, like, the best, my favorite part of the show 
that I do is the audience questions because mm-hmm. they have the best questions, especially when it's people who who know the, the folks that we're talking about and they'll right. say, hey, can you tell us a story about this? Hey, hey, Uncle Fergus, tell the possum story. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, like, yeah, I, I, I you're, you're right. The, the interview, the interview shows are easier. Right. Yeah, but uh, mostly because it, it doesn't. There's, there's never a, especially ones like that are sort of pre, that are pre prepped. If you know what you're getting into and know the question, and I think that's the person's easy for the guest. So yeah. at Helga and Tulio, when they do between two peers, they don't, the guests don't get the question ahead of time. So I like that because you get their natural reaction. Um, but, and no, Fergus, we don't have time for that. No, it's later. later. Um, <laughs> if you've never heard of Fergus's possum story, go watch Between Two Peers uh, two episodes ago. Yeah. Oh, the, the episode of like 300 fucks. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you're Fergus telling the possum stories. Um, Dude, do not watch that show around children. No. <laughs> Or children, or your mother, or or yeah. the per- just just no, go to your bedroom, watch it by yourself. Um, uh, but yeah, but yeah, that, that's a it's a thing. So, um, but so, but I, I wanted to do shows that were about a thing, and not about the person, so that we could focus on topics, right? I want to talk about those topics because everybody, because everybody else was doing was doing opinions or was doing interview shows. Yeah, yeah. that was the sort of the default thing. And let's talk to people. And yeah. I think uh, uh, eight and Inquisition just started. Eight, so eight and they'll just started one. But they're they're interviewing members of the populace, which is kind of cool. They're they're changing it up a little bit. They're interviewing yeah. sort of random members of the populace, which I think is neat, versus interviewing the peers. Yes, um, which is kind of cool. And they, I mean, they started with their seneschal because it was an easy like, here's a start, right? I mean, uh-huh. that, that's a neat format. I'll enjoy watching that a little bit. Um, but like you know, Alan's royalties, they're interviewing all the past counts and dukes. But it's so, it's, so you're and so you're getting the same topic over and over again. Is what's it like to be king or queen? Yeah, yeah. The entire topic. After three or four shows, it's sort of like the, the topic burns out. You get one that's interesting. This this guy's funny. This lady's guy's good story. She's inspirational, right? But the topic doesn't change. Right. You know, whereas every one of these shows is different. And so I, and that's so for me, that's better. I mean, yeah. That was really where it was. Well, and we need this type of show as well. Right. All right. Here's the question that I want to address. And I think we're going to close out because I am just about out. What do you think is the long-term impact of SCA web shows? Do you think they will lead to more commonalities across the SCA? Uh, and I'll explain this a little bit. What do we think about the? Uh, what do we think is going to be the long-term impact of virtual courts? Uh, what do you think is the long-term impact of virtual SCA of, or the ESCA? What's the long-term impact of those things? Um. So one thing that I have noticed is where our the, the 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 different kingdoms mm-hmm. so these web shows uh, we're getting so many more people together from different kingdoms um than you do at events like because even at events like I've, I've lived in several different kingdoms uh i still know people from all of them and one of my the things that i always want is i want all of my friends from all of these different places to be in the same space right. right but even then like and it happens at you know some big wars or, or big events you know you'll you'll get uh you know two or three from here two or three from here and then a bunch from wherever you're at and it's great it's awesome and people start to make these friendships that cross borders you know what i mean that they, that cross time zones and eventually you have this great wonderful actual known world party going on <laughs> where it's not like like i've i've seen like the the big parties uh like stay for for the royals or whatever um at large wars well they come in and they stand in these little groups of the people that they know right they don't they don't really mix as much I think one of the benefits of the web shows is that we are getting a lot more cross kingdom interaction um, and it's breaking down some of those kingdom barriers. And we're learning a lot so much more about like other kingdoms that I like I've never known. There's there's kingdoms that I haven't lived in and I like someone will say, oh, well, we do this thing in our kingdom. And I'm like, 
you do what? Not that it's a bad thing, but it's like, that's an awesome idea. Like, that's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, so I think that's, that's the benefit of the web shows. Uh, in the future, I think that, I don't know. Once we get back to live events, like, I'm already planning to slow down my shows right. and make it bi-weekly right. you know, or even once a month, just depending on what's going on. I still want to continue the show though. Um, but I, I think it, it's actually made it a little bit easier for some people to interact with everyone because they can do it, their camera off and just listening if they need to and still feel like they're, they're there. You know what I mean? Like still feel like they're a part of the, the event. Um, or if they just don't have the spoons, you know, they can just not, show up to a web event, you know? Yeah, no, I think you're, you're right. So, so there's two, there's two parts of this. So let's so looking at web shows and looking at the, the sort of the live streaming stuff of events, court, whatever. Right. I think that's two pieces. I know yesterday I, I talked to, when I talked, I was talking to his majesty Bela after their show, he doesn't want to see, um, he, he was, he was talking, he, he wasn't necessarily happy with the idea of live streaming courts. And, and I and I disagree with him a little bit on that. I, I get why he thinks that. I, I get so I get there's some opinions on it. Uh, I see her highness uh, Sarah in the comments talking. About she wants that. I think live streaming courts in the future and live streaming things like crown tournament. We already live stream crown tournaments a lot of times. We already live stream a lot of the bigger events, coronations and whatnot. I think live streaming courts is a is a grand idea. Or if nothing else, recording them and posting them. I get uh, Katrina mentioned that live streaming could be an issue at some sites. You're right. Mm -hmm. Some sites out in the middle of the woods, we can't always live stream. We can always record them, though. Uh, I think that's always going to be an option. I think, I think we, the SCA needs to be more um, accessible, is a good word, um, yeah. to more people. Uh, and I, I think that's a, if, if we can record them or live stream courts and the larger events, people will be less likely to have to sh come to an event when they're sick or if they can't come because they're sick or they can't come because they have some sort of a disability, inability, inability, whatever. Uh, or their kids sick or whatever. A hundred reasons they can't show up at an event. They don't miss their friend's elevation, or they don't miss their 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 friend getting an award or some cool thing that they're now outside of the group. Right? That creates an in, in an in group and an out group. If I miss the joke, I'm not part of the out group. Yeah, yeah. Right, and that's that makes our that makes the SCA more divided, we, and that's the last thing we need right now is to be more divided. Oh god, if we're divided enough. We need to be less divided. Um. So I think I think I'm hoping that continues. And, and if if I or you know, and I'm sure Logan speaks this, if people like us have anything to do with it, we we will live stream courts. We will we will we will provide our our tech services where we can to make those things happen. Um, because I, I want to see that happen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the thing that came out of that for in, within the pandemic, you're right, is I know more about the West Kingdom than I ever needed to. <laughs> um, and I know more about you guys and, and, and I've, I've grown like so I know more about about chivalry and the virtues and just you know meeting you meeting Helga meeting Thule meeting Thorfinn meeting Fergus unfortunately meeting Sarah you know meeting all these people has helped me grow as a person and I'm hoping my growth on camera and a lot of cases helps help other people grow right so my show, your show, between two peers, we we've opened up so much in getting people involved in in lowering those barriers, either barriers between kingdoms or barriers between the peers and the in the populace, or barriers between the royalty and the populace, right? Those are all barriers that existed that I'm right. I'm hoping and I, I'm seeing evidence of it that we've removed a lot of those barriers or at least made them lower, right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And the wall still may be there, but at least we can see over it now, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I think that that's a thing. Um, as far as in the future, yeah, you're right. I think once we're, once we're back to events every other weekend or every weekend, these shows are going to be a lot, right? Um, yeah. Once a weekend, like I know Outlands Royalty won't exist anymore. Like they, they, they will probably stop doing Outlands Royalty. I, I won't speak for them, but if it's yeah. Saturday, they're not going to do that on Saturday anymore. No, no. It happen. Um, so they may go to change the format or they may stop it altogether. Um, same thing, Coffee with Cal, uh, you know, eh. I'm still going to want to do Coffee with Cal's because I enjoy talking about the things. Uh, and Kisa mentioned this is I really talk about doing event recaps. Uh, yeah. I think an event recap show would be awesome. So I went to the event this week. Yeah. 
we shall be friends when we get back. Uh, we should do that. I should do that show. Uh, <laughs> or some else should do that show. I'll help you. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think doing event recaps would be fun because then we could talk about what happened to the event, goods, bad, the uglies, here's cool stuff, right? You know, sort of a a, a post event thing. Yeah. I tell you what, uh, to, if I jump in real quick, I'll tell you what I really want to see. And this is not like I really don't have any skin in this game except for the fact that I want more time with my friends at events right. out in the West, um, like Sundays is normally the peer meetings mm. so you you lose a big chunk of people for at least at least an hour if they're a single peer you know right. what i mean um or in yeah or like yeah you if you got someone who's a knight and a pelican you know, that's four hours gone right there and it's also um you know if it's teardown day like they're in these meetings the meetings are important but then they feel bad because everybody's at camp tearing down and they're not there. Right. Or if it's just, you know, Hey, we could start tear down uh, at, you know, one in the afternoon and we could spend the, the whole morning, like having one more tournament or right. doing one more thing uh, where we get to cheer on our friends and watch our friends. Right. Like, so I'm hoping that those peerage meetings, could get moved to like, Hey, we had the event two days after event when everybody's home, they have their zoom meeting and they can talk about all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, um, zoom meetings are easily moderated. I know like the whole thing is, Oh, we've got everybody here right now. We should talk to them, but you don't, you don't have everybody. You have whoever's at the event, right. you know, and you can get more folks at that zoom meeting than you could, possibly at the event but once again i've never been in one of those meetings so i don't know right this is this is peer on peer, talking about peer stuff right now but yeah yeah, um, yeah. but from two non-peers sitting here please god do that uh so i, I so actually in meridians our peer meetings are often on saturday in the middle of the day oh boy so if the nights are gone for an hour from one to two o'clock what are they missing what fights are they missing when they could mm. be fighting and teaching or watching the squires fight or watching the unbelts fight, right? Yeah. You know? and, and yeah, you're right. Those meetings are important and they we should not go to, to all of them virtual, right? And again, this is not your or yours or my decision or business to make, but speaking as an unbelt out there fighting, I would much prefer the knights to be out there watching me fight and helping me fight and fighting with me yeah. instead of the meeting talking about me. Exactly. That's that's my preference and I'm sure a hundred other unbelts would agree with me. Um, and that's just the night. I'm sure the, in, the, how many Pelicans are damn busy at events because they're busy being Pelicans. Right. I'll have a meeting, you know. Like, um, we wrap this up. I got shit to do. Yeah, I can go cook still, right? And it's a thing. So I think that's a that's a thing. Uh, but I, I know there are a, uh, a, 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 a small contingent, I, I'm, I'm thinking of, of boomers in, our, in the SCA uh, <laughs> that, are, that are having problems with, with virtual meetings. And you're going to have that, unfortunately. Well, you just need to get your grandkid to come up and <laughs> Fix it for you. Right. Yeah, go, go find the youngest person who works at your office and make them do it for you. <laughs> I'm going to get beat up so much when we get back to this stuff. That's <laughs> like, I've talked so much crap since I've been on these shows. I'm going to get smacked. Yeah. Yeah. I'm that's I'm the August beans from way over here because she can't hit me. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have to worry about her more than I do. Um, Absolutely. 100%. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Every peer that, that Rune has talked to has agreed the online meetings are hugely beneficial. I, yeah, even if they only do them like sometimes, still do like the, sure, at Coronation and Crownless, whatever, they have their big meetings there. Once a year meetings, twice a year meetings, sure. I'm okay with those, right? They can do those. And then also they can meet monthly in a Zoom meeting, right? Mm -hmm. I think that, that's useful. Um, and then, yeah, so uh, Her Grace, I think it's Her Grace. Is that right? I'm going to go with it. I don't know. Duke Sean's wife, uh, who's yeah, her grace. Her grace. Uh, as I'm pretty sure she's done. Um, sorry, your grace. Yeah. Uh, it's not able to spend time with, with the peers and the, and the royalty because the how the other royalty are also in those meetings now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That's, yeah, that's a, that's six hours of their day, like gone. <laughs> yeah. uh, especially if you have, if you have also have polling orders that they have to also be in or whatever, or, you know, they, they have also their own business they're handling. Yep. Uh, whereas I'd like personally, if I were king, I would much prefer be hanging out with the populace and hanging out with the kids and 
going to the archer range and going riding the horse and doing all the stuff with the people, yeah, and being that inspirational king than sitting in a meeting. Mm-hmm. Right. That's you know. That's just again. That's just me. You know. I, that's you know. Not everybody's that way, but that's that's how I would do it. Yeah. Not that I have any chance of being king anytime soon, but damn it, I'm gonna try. So. <laughs> Doesn't hurt, to, doesn't hurt to try. Right. All right. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's that's where we're at with web shows. I think the the idea of these shows are going to keep going. We've got at least to what, June, I think they said. What's what's our, what's our new date? August, July, somewhere in there of. I don't remember. There's a few more months at least of. of and then I, sp- speaking based on my COVID experiences, we, we're going to have at least another. Uh, 2022 is our next yeah. event. So and that's like I'm talking about it right now, uh, and along with a bunch of other folks in the West, you know, uh, 2022 going to double wars over in Sweden. Oh yeah, yeah. Look, we've got enough time to plan for it. I'm telling everybody, um, you know, it's not just a fighting event. So look into it if you're you're interested in what we've been talking about. You can uh, find our group. It's um, the West and friends go to double wars 2022 on Facebook. Feel free to sign up. Uh, we'll let you in and you know, it's a chance for you guys to ask questions mm-hmm. about, uh, to the people over at Drock and Ball, um, and figure out what, uh, what's going on and what you need to do to get ready for it. We've got time. So let's do it. Yep. Yeah. Make sure you're spending your time, spend your time wisely, fix your armor, clean your swords, make new garb, but also don't bring yourself out. Don't don't feel bad that yeah. you're not doing that. Don't feel bad that you're not doing a web show right now. Yeah. So you see us doing it and it looks easy and we're all happy and go lucky about it. But trust me, when we're done with this, I'm sad and depressed just like our belt out there is. So we put on we put on a pretty face for this or a pretty ish face, but whatever. Um, you know, it, this is not I'm easy. Sure. It, that's why I grew a beard. It covers up post in the face. <laughs> right. So if you're if you're out there and not doing anything, if you're just surviving, survive. That's the important part. Now this life sucks. COVID yeah. sucks. Politics it's sucks. Up. Our country's falling yeah. apart. Like we get it. It sucks. Okay. Um, but do what you can. Find your friends out there. Participate in these shows. If you want to do a show, if you have an idea for a show, reach out. I will do everything I can to help you. And if I can't help you, you know, I, I'll find somebody who can help you. Um, let's make that happen. Let's have you having fun and make other people having fun. Um, oh yeah. April 22, April 22, 2022. Uh, there is a, uh, Sean's doing his backyard fighting fight club event. Um, so look that up on Facebook as well. I don't know what it's called. Um, if you could post a link to that, Chris, in the comments, I would appreciate that. Um, what else coming up? All right. Well, I just, well, coming up on this channel. Uh, let's see. We got next week on uh, What Makes a Night. I'll be joined by Duke Sean, as always, and Sir Robert Dispenser and Sir Leah Dispenser. Talk about the three legs of peerage. So that's going to be a, a, a really interesting show. Talking about what else goes into to being a knight, the arts and service sides, and how you balance those things. Um, the following Wednesday, I'll be joined by Duke Raffin uh, from an in store invasion. I'll also be joined by the current King of Seneschal. Uh, my good friend, uh, uh, Master Brian, uh, Brian, Brian O'Houlihan, uh, and hopefully uh, his wife, Elena, uh, Mr. Selena, who play Game of the Goose. Uh, it's an easy, super easy game, but uh, Duke Raffin is, a, is an awesome games teacher from over in Osteora, so bringing all of them over to play games with me. And then to continue on the theme of virtual things in the SCA, uh, the following Sunday for Coffee with Cal, I'll be joined by Ouyang Yingzhao Taishi who is uh, one of the newest laurels here in Meridiers, who is ele- both offered and elevated virtually. Um, so we're going to talk about what, how that went and sort of what her thoughts on elevations in a digital age and uh, sort of sort of continuing this conversation we're having here about the, the ESCA and how elevations work. Because uh, you, you, you only see the, 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 the Zoom side, you don't see the back side. So there's a lot going on. Uh, and being involved, I'm actually helping uh, one of our, uh, our newest laurel candidates uh, with hers right now. And it, there's a lot to it. There's a lot to an elevation on a good day, much less than a virtual one. So uh, tune in for that. <sighs> That's a lot of talking. Uh, Logan, anything from you? Any final thoughts? Uh, no, man. Thanks for having me on. It was a blast. Oh. Um, having a fantastic time. I'm glad we got to chit-chat about all this. 
Yeah. And I hope that somebody found something useful out of it. Uh, people are just listening to his talks. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming they did. Uh, also, right. not forget, tune in Thursday for Ask the Nights Live. Uh, oh, yeah, there is that show. <laughs> Some guy on that show, right? Yeah, uh, this Thursday, uh, Ask the Nights Live. Um, I've got two uh, Easter nights on this week. Uh, so that'll be fun. A uh, little bit of different perspective from, you know, the folks that I normally have on. And also, don't forget our lovely sibling show, Between Two Peers, because why would you not watch that show? They don't need more viewers. Don't watch them. <laughs> <laughs> don't need us. No. Yeah. Um, I And I happen to have know that there might be a commercial coming up for with yours truly in it. So I made a commercial, Ooh. Logan. It was nice. Ridiculous. <laughs> It involves like used car lots and things. So it, <laughs> fun with that. Um, so yeah, so so tune in for that. I'm not sure when it's gonna air, but so keep an eye out for it. Uh, all right. Well, that, my friends, is an empty cup. And look at that, look at the red. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Okay, that is an empty cup. Um, this has been a pleasure. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, thank you all for the questions and the comments. This has been a ton of fun. Remember, reach out, be awesome. This has been Cal and Logan in Calvary's Corner. Day, everybody.